arts than any of the men. They believe in the superficiality of existence as in its essence, and all virtue and profundity is to them only the disguising of this truth, the very desirable disguising of a pudendum, an affair, therefore, of decency and modesty, and nothing more. This is Nietzsche. The more famous Nietzsche passage is also quoted by Derrida, perhaps truth is a woman who has reason for not letting us see her reason. Perhaps her name is, to speak Greek, Baubo, in other words, female genital, post-reproductive, unbeautiful <coughs> female genital. I mean, Joan Rivers was on the, on the, uh, the telly the other night, and I was getting ready, and I saw that she was talking about uh, vaginal plastic surgery, unbeautiful, post-reproductive, uh, old women's genitals, to speak Greek, Baubo, the name of truth. On the track of Bauho, we will encounter many fascinating neuroclassical complications that we cannot pursue here. It is quite possible that Nietzsche finds this staging of truth more attractive than uncritical rational speculation. Without falling into the famous intentional fallacy, we can submit that this staging of truth as disguised post-reproductive female genitals carries a tone of fear and derision quite unlike the tone of the presentation of a Zarathustra figure. To see how this position, critical of the honorary male confidence in uncritical speculative reason, can be staged another way, Tilly Olsen is perhaps the most apposite author, for in her novella, Tell Me a Riddle, she takes a Rosa Luxemburg figure, a woman who had participated in the 1905 revolution in Russia, and then gone the path of marriage, and migration to the United States. It is as if the rose, grown old in a more normal trajectory, shows us the <coughs> violence of reproductive heteronormativity, expectations from a grandmother who must not care about humanity, but only about grandchildren, the sheer unremarkable violence of the everyday, a gendered everyday that unhinges the mind by a commonplace denial of the public sphere. Her faith in progress in a double bind with individual death is not groundless because suspended from a metaphor and should be understood in terms of the double bind of a gendered violence that also spells love and social reproduction. As the protagonist moves toward death, Olsen weaves passages, sometimes dreamlike, that lay out this conflict poignantly. She is scolded because she has scared her son-in-law, the rabbi, quote, Hannah's Phil. At once go and make them change. Tell them to write race, human, religion, none. And the husband's response, look how you have upset yourself, Mrs. Excited, over nothing. <laughs> the killing cancer describes, as I quote, being able at last to live within and not move to the rhythms of others, as life had forced her to, denying, removing, isolating, taking the children one by one, then deafening, half-blinding, and at last presenting her solitude. Now he was violating it, his husband, with his constant campaigning, sell the house and move to the haven. Quote again, hunger, secret meetings, human rights, spies, betrayal, prison, escape, interrupted by one of the grandchildren. Her breath was too faint for sustained speech now, but the lips moved as a human being, responsibility, dogma dead, war dead, one country. In 1994, in Politics of Friendship, Derrida makes the useful comment that European political philosophy had allowed woman entry as honorary male. I am suggesting that becoming an academic, like becoming a nun in the European Middle Ages, is one way of becoming an honorary male if one can afford to ignore these kinds of questions in public, having access to a certain kind of public voice. On a less sublime register than very does honorary male, I might add here that the injunction to be unisex in the academy, in spite of the small gains of women's studies and queer studies, has not disappeared. In the usual everyday sexism of academic conversations, I think of Rosa Luxemburg, a writer of books that changed left thinking all over the world. She did not make the grade because no institution protected her. The final abuse from those who killed her was the usual gendered words floating up, not a political opponent, but a whore. 